before we get started here, I just want to say that on September 21st, we will be doing our very first ever live stream. It will be for my birthday. It's partially a fundraiser so that I can move out. Uh, I don't really want to be homeless. So you can help out with that directly. Essentially, it will be open. You can just like send stuff in, whether it's like a demo your band is working on or like a little art project. I'll sit down. We'll all watch it together. We'll talk about it, etc., etc. It'll be one of those, you know? Mark your calendars. I'm terrified that nobody's going to come. With all that said, God, that's so pretty. I think that America is the coolest country in the world, not because it is particularly fair or not corrupt or because it's a very good place to live to begin with, but simply because we make a lot of cool stuff. I think the culture out here, the people, it's world class. I mean, there's nothing better. I mean, like if you want human decency and healthcare, you have all of Europe, but you know what all those other places don't have? Good movies, good bands, they're all here. Everybody in the world can hate us, but they can't say they're not obsessed with us. I was lucky enough to travel most of the 48 continental states during my tour with my band last summer. I judged every single place and I formed my own opinion. I'm just gonna talk about all 50 states now, so buckle up. This is a personal list. I'm going off of Vibe Factor here, just like my feelings and stuff. Some places get a better score because somebody helped me change my attire. Other places get a bad score because they have a couple ex-girlfriends there. I don't make the rules, just kidding, I actually do. You get what you get, you don't throw a fit, you don't like it, start your own goddamn YouTube channel. So yeah, if you get mad at me for whatever ranking, you only have yourself to blame for putting any weight or importance in this video to begin with. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started. Alabama, so I drove through Alabama a few times and it left absolutely zero impression on me at all. I did not care for Alabama in the slightest. I mean, it's it's got some really nasty history. I love me some sweet tea, but I hate grits, you know? Birmingham is not a real city and nobody can convince me otherwise. Also, uh, this is one of those states, stop calling all soda Coke, okay? If I ask for a Coke and you hand me a Pepsi, all right, I'm gonna drone strike your house in Minecraft. I keep scooting that way, I shouldn't. I need to keep framing in the mind. Yeah, Alabama gets a D tier. Alaska, this one is a bizarre state. It is intense and it's really punk rock. It's kind of like the Black Sheep, like the last frontier, you know? You got weird alien stuff. Uh, it's got that one town that fits entirely in one building. They got polar bears, you know? I mean, digging through photos, Anchorage looks really beautiful. I got family up there and they absolutely love it. Did I mention polar bears? Holy cow. It's also worth noting that they have the third highest gun ownership ranking. So when Russia eventually invades us, Alaska will have our back. So, I mean, aside from everything being expensive, Alaska's kind of punk rock and cool. A tier. Arizona, I have actually spent a good amount of time here. Uh, there are a lot of really good pockets of community in Arizona. I had the best burrito of my entire life in Tucson, actually. Holy cow. So I went to a bar to get some drinks. It was like literally the night after my partner of four years dumped me. The bartender in Arizona like took such good care of me. Uh, they, they, they really made sure I went home feeling okay. God bless them. It's also worth mentioning that Arizona has a lot more like geological diversity. Like it's not just like desert, you know? Like there's also like green and little pockets of pretty plants and stuff like that. Like there's more going on than just like dirt, you know? It's beautiful, it's got good food, it's got good culture, it's got good people. Phoenix kind of sucks though. This is controversial. I'm gonna give Arizona an A tier. Arkansas, so I have actually driven through here a few times. It is just white noise forever. You can turn on your TV to like channel like 4000 or something like that, where like the ghosts are trying to communicate to you. You get the exact same effect. The state is for ghosts. Kids who grew up in Arkansas, are you feeling okay? This is the kind of place that just like breeds iPad babies, you know? Like there's nothing to do except like, to doom scroll and brain rot on social media. What's what's notable here? You got freaking Walmart. You got Bill Clinton, ch rice and chicken. F tier, this is an F tier state, it sucks. California, Fox News, buckle up buddies. I actually have a lot of respect for California. It has a lot more diversity in terms of landscapes than like entire countries tend to. I, I really admire it because it is sort of a breeding ground for a lot of innovation in humanity in general, you know? Not like technology bullshit or anything like that, but more so just like good food, culture, movies and stories, art, you know? Because it's such a cutting edge place, it tends to attract like the best of everything across the entire world. So like whatever you are looking for, in life or anything like that, you can probably find one of the best versions of it in California, whether that be like painting or music or definitely film for sure. Theme parks, it's, it's all in California. Whatever it is that makes you happy, 
it's there. Also worth mentioning, I think that the Redwoods are like the most beautiful place I've ever been to in my entire life. I keep scooting this way. I need to, I need to stay over here. I remember driving through the Redwoods and being like, oh my God, this is literally out of a postcard. Like it is magical out there. Sure, you gotta deal with like outrageous taxes and the cost of living, occasionally like weird politics or something like that. They gotta warn you for everything, you know, everything might have cancer. Yeah, of course it does. We're in the year 2024. I'm already like 40% microplastics, but like, the weather is awesome. It is absolutely beautiful. You have like the best food in the entire world. Like I don't want to live here, but I really respect California for what it is, you know? If it's not your thing, that's cool. But I think for the people who it is for, there's absolutely nothing else like it for anyone in the world. So I, I, I'm sorry, I gotta give California an S tier. I'm so sorry. Colorado, I am not a huge fan of Colorado. You got South Park, you got satanic airports, you got drugs, you got rich white people, etc. I think it's worth knowing that the state is more rural than people give it credit for. Like I was just driving through it a few weeks ago and uh, they, they, there was just nothing. Denver is one of my least favorite cities in the world. I mean like, yeah, sure, we did have a rough show there. Nobody came because it was 21 plus because there's just like no all ages stuff to do out there. I don't know, like I once had a layover on a Greyhound in that area and I walked into the bathroom and there was a urinal with a poop in it. And that poop looked just like, like the emoji. It was awful. And in the corner over there, there was like six guys literally smoking methamphetamine all huddled together like a big meth club. I could smell it. I know what meth smells like. They were smoking meth over there. I just, I consistently have a really bad time in Denver. I don't love Denver. Everything else is kind of boring. I mean, you got Casa Bonita for sure, but like, I don't like Colorado. Colorado doesn't love me back. Although I do have to say lobster fight is really good. Yeah, it gets a D tier. Hey buddy. We got seagulls everywhere. Connecticut, so you got like good seafood. You got like this really great like Northeast Marine aesthetic going on. It's not too far away from like Boston, New York City. It's just like nothing really pops. Nothing's too special about Connecticut. I have a very dear friend who lived here and she told me that Connecticut is just filled with the most depressed, miserable people. Like it's hard to leave. It like gives you the bare minimum and it just sucks your soul out. At least that was her description. I've never lived in Connecticut. I've driven through it a few times, but like, I don't know, with the passion that she was telling me that story, it just kind of stuck with me. Connecticut just seems like the ultimate fine enough place. The only thing keeping it from ranking a lot lower is just because it's hanging out and like, one of the most interesting places in the world, like Boston over there, New York over there, Philly, like a hop, skip and a jump through Jersey. Yeah, this is what a C tier looks like. Delaware, so Delaware is like a weird, another like white noise state, you know? But at least they're trying to do something about it. Delaware was like, we are just so God boring that we need some way to reinvigorate our economy. And so they just became like the business state. They, uh, they set their state policies to be so cartoonishly just pro-business, the tons of corporations just move their operations to Delaware to take advantage of all that stuff. So if you're like a blood sucking businessman, Delaware is the place to go. Uh, I'm an anti-capitalist, but I do respect their own recognition that Delaware sucks. They need to do something. It was also like the first state established, I guess. Congratulations. I don't know. It's just Delaware seems like a D tier state, but because like they're so self-aware and they're trying to do something about it. I guess that bumps it up to like a C, I guess. Oh boy, we got Florida. I like alligators. I like lizards. Uh, I like snakes. I worked as a zookeeper for a while. I'm a little bit biased. A lot of my favorite animals are found in Florida. Some of them shouldn't be there. I really like theme parks. I think that there's something really interesting about like how hyper curated and maximalist they are, how like focused they are on curating every single element in like your sensory experience and whatnot. I think theme parks are a really cool art form and Florida has like the best in the world. I love weirdos. I love little pockets of earnest humanity everywhere. I like ska music. I like key lime pie. I also really like outer space too. But I also really like my transgender friends at the same time. I like human rights. I like freedom of speech. Florida doesn't really seem to like those things all that much. Yeah, I don't know. Florida gets a B tier. Georgia, so this is like a better version of Alabama, right? It does have the same evil history for sure. But Georgia has pulled such a beautiful and authentic culture out of that evil history. I love me some peaches. Uh, I'm actually wearing a Graveface Records t-shirt right now. Uh, that can be found in Savannah, Georgia. It's like the coolest record store museum complex in the world, I think. Savannah rules. I loved exploring that city. There's like a lot of cool, spooky history down there, you know? Yeah, this is controversial. I give it an A tier. Hawaii. I have never been. This seems like a nightmare state to me. So it joined the USA after the monarchy was overthrown in 1893. Hawaii was annexed by the United States and it became a state in 1959. Now a huge chunk of land is owned by outside investors. When you are staying in all these fancy resorts and hotels for vacation, that money gets sent elsewhere out of the local economy. Folks, 
that lived there for generations can now no longer afford to live there. Tourists are destroying that local infrastructure. So essentially the authentic Hawaii that we know is now being destroyed and sanded down to cater to all these tourists, etc. Is being replaced with a facade carved out of the remains of real people, culture, and art. I don't think we should be going to Hawaii. If you do go to Hawaii, you should probably work on making sure that the money that you spend stays in Hawaii. That means like avoiding these big resorts that are run by folks in like California and New York. Do a little bit of Googling. Make sure that the place you're staying at is actually owned by Hawaiians. Also stay away from Airbnbs. Those are destroying the housing market down there. <sighs> Listen, Hawaii is an F-tier state simply because I don't think it should be an F-tier. There's just like no way for me to engage in Hawaii and like feel good about it. Idaho, so Idaho has two extremes. You have like the Treasure Valley with like Boise and Meridian and all those places that like all the Californians are moving to. And up north, you actually have like the panhandle and stuff like that. That's where all the hate groups live. Like there are like Ku Klux Klan, Nazi compounds and that sort of thing. But the thing is, it has a ton of beautiful public land. It is absolutely stunning. The gorillas like drove through it once and they wrote a song about just how much they loved it. I think that Boise is like one of the most underrated cities in the world. It is beautiful. It's amazing. The culture is so rich. It's so full of great, excellent people. Fun fact, do you know that Boise actually has more people living in it than Salt Lake City? But why is Salt Lake City always considered to be like one of the great metropolitan areas of the country? Meanwhile, Boise is just kind of ignored, you know? It's like a punchline in Pink Flamingos. Boise, Idaho, get ready. I was born and raised in Idaho. I'm a little bit biased. I think Idaho just has a special soul to it. The politics are evil, sure. Potatoes are fine, I guess, but like the people there are amazing. I love the arts out there. Boise legitimately has like one of the best music scenes in the country, I would argue. On paper, if I didn't come from Idaho, I would be looking at it and I'd be like, this is a B tier state. In my heart, it's my channel. It's gotta be an S. Illinois, I am so tired of pretending that Illinois is like not super cool, okay? No, this is where Superman was invented. Like you can go to the actual like metropolis and see like a giant Superman statue. Also worth noting, you have Chicago. As much as I hated driving through Chicago, Chicago is a pretty cool city. I would give my left leg to try one of those like Italian sandwiches, like an Italian beef sandwich. You know, you see it on the bear and stuff like that. It's got tons of really interesting history. Like I know it's one of those Midwest boring states, but like this is the pinnacle boring Midwest state. I think it has enough contributions and enough interesting culture and history. I mean, look at Sufjan Stevens and stuff like that, what he was able to make out of this boring old state. I think it is a sleeper hit. I would say actually, uh, I would give it an a tier, Indiana. So it's easy to look at Indiana and be like, oh my God, this is one of those like hillbilly backwoods states, you know? But they totally own being a hillbilly backwoods state. You got like the Indy 500, you got Amish people paying with cash at gas stations. The state fair to end all state fairs. This is clearly a hick state, but like this is the hick state. They are just so confident with how wonder bread their state is. I gotta give them credit for that. So it gets like a low B tier, Iowa. Imagine somebody hands you a rock and they say, hey, could you write me like a 2000 page paper on this rock? It's like, yeah, it's, it's a rock, but like what is there to say about it? All right, Iowa. Uh, you got farms, you got Amish people, uh, Iowa inspired the American Gothic painting. Don't they look just super excited to be there? Do those people look stoked to live in Iowa? Does anybody feel stoked to be living in Iowa? Iowa people, have you guys invented the internet, electricity, to watch this video to begin with? As an Idaho native, I am so tired of people being like, oh, Iowa, that's like Boise, right? Iowa, potatoes. No, that's not. There's actually things to do in Idaho. In Iowa, there's like, Literally nothing. If you think like Idaho's barren, holy cow, no, Iowa. Yeah, I gotta give Iowa like a low D tier. Like that is as low as you can get without committing like some humanitarian atrocities. Kansas. Uh, so Kansas is like one of those states that's just like mainly highways and like those little turnoffs with the same like hotels, gas stations, McDonald's, etc., etc. And they like drive through and they get back on the highway. Mother Nature is so tired of Kansas that she keeps throwing tornadoes at them. Kansas City is pretty cool. Uh, it does have a pretty good music scene and all that. It's just the thing is the music scene is so good because like all the kids who live out there are so bored that there's nothing else to do except like hang out in your garage and make bands. Admittedly, Kansas does have a pretty cool state fair and all that. I, I just, I can't justify higher than a C tier. Louisiana, so I've never been to Louisiana. 
I'm just going off of what I've read about Louisiana. Uh, portrayals in the news, movies, TV shows, books. Guys, New Orleans sounds amazing. You got like all the haunted spooky stuff. You got people who think they're vampires. You got po' boys. You got mint juleps. Beignets. Ooh, I love those. I grew up a fan of like Disney's Haunted Mansion and all that. So like the gothic ornate vibe that like all of the architecture out there has. Amazing. You have Mardi Gras, you have alligators, you got alcohol. Uh, even outside of New Orleans, I, it, it sounds interesting. You got some beautiful beaches. Uh, you have beautiful nature in the bayous. I think bayous are pretty. I don't know. It's just the state seems so different from other states in terms of like what they're exporting, what they eat, how they speak to each other. I think like it's interesting and that's really cool and valuable. Like as an outsider looking at the culture of Louisiana and the day of our Lord, I think I got to give it like a B tier. Maine. You have forests, you have lobsters, you have lighthouses. It, it, it looks beautiful in the fall. You have Stephen King, you have maple syrup. I, I actually haven't been to Maine, so I can't really speak too extensively on it. I, I love nature and stuff. It seems like a solid place, I guess. I don't know, it just doesn't arouse a lot of like strong feelings in me, so I gotta give it like a B tier. Maryland, this is one of the OG colonies, boys. So you got Chesapeake Bay, which has like my favorite seasoning in the world. It goes crazy on goldfish crackers. They gave us the Star Spangled Banner, a national anthem that I think is really overstated. It's welcome. I think that it's time to move on to Miley Cyrus or something along those lines. You also got Baltimore. That's a city for sure. Like it has a good music scene. Shout out combat. It has those people where when you stop at like a stoplight, they come up and wash your windshield. And if you tell them no, they just keep doing it anyway. And then when they're done washing your windshield that you didn't ask them to do, they get mad at you and you don't tip them and that kind of thing. And so then they like break off your rear view mirror or something stupid like that. I hate those people. I hope that like the worst things that can happen to a person happen to all those people you know it's it's a c tier it's it's a it's a fine state i guess massachusetts so this place seems like connecticut's cooler sibling so like there's a more even split between like cities and nature i can tell you that they're gonna have really good seafood over there they go crazy for st patrick's day that's awesome you got salem halloween that's a lot of points for me this just seems like the kind of place where the people who live there think that it's really boring but anybody just looking at it objectively is like this place is actually really cool you know it seems beautiful uh, it seems varied it seems like a good place to be so i'm gonna get give it a low A tier. Michigan. So like, listen, Michigan is like, it's a fine state. It's a fine, massive land. You know, we played in, in Detroit and Detroit wound up being my favorite concert on the entire tour. It was amazing. I'm just bothered by how transparently evil and racist the infrastructure of Michigan is. Like obviously everywhere is inherently like racist if you pick it apart and that sort of thing. It's just in Michigan, it's so in your face evil. Uh, first, you got Detroit. You got redlining just baked into the city's layout. You have these sort of segregated schools and all that. You have their brutal, brutal police force. Also, don't forget the uh, gentrification happening right now. Flint did not get clean water until 2022. 2014, 2022, no guarantee clean water. Oh my God. I know that Michigan is more than its stupid politicians. I know that there's like a lot of beautiful lives taking place in Michigan. I know that there's a lot of people happy to live there. It's just like everything that I've been exposed to in Michigan is just evil. I, I just, I can't form an opinion outside of what I've been exposed to directly. And it's all evil. Michigan kind of sucks. That is an F tier state. Minnesota, Minnesota kind of rules. Like some of the nicest people in the country are from Minnesota. I love Paul Bunyan. That is like such a great American fable. Minneapolis is a great city. Not enough people talk about it. Every time that my band visits uh, Minnesota, we actually get to stay with this delightful family out there who like take us in, let's sleep on their couches and they buy us food and take us out on adventures and that kind of thing. Hi, Spencer. They're great. I, they really colored my experience with Minnesota, you know? The Mall of America is pretty cool as well. It's just, it's a vibey state, you know? It's not trying to do anything too crazy. They got Motion City Soundtrack too. I do like me some Motion City Soundtrack. Yeah, it's like it's a B-tier state. Mississippi, so Mississippi is a really sad state for me. It's just, it's a bummer place to be. I've spent a lot of time in Hernando, Mississippi, and that is a place for sure. Like, there are a ton of kind, nice people, but like, I don't know, the place... There is a sense of desperation in the air out there. All of the buildings are falling apart. It's just been completely abandoned by the leaders. Nobody really seems to want to be there, but the wages are so low that nobody can really seem to escape. The history is sad. Everything has been neglected. The nicest thing I can say about Mississippi is nice people, okay food, the drives from places with all the trees. That's nice, but like, who are we kidding? Someone needs to give Mississippi a break because it's an F tier from me.
Missouri, there is a shocking number of fireworks stands in Missouri. I do not like the fact that parts of Kansas City are in Missouri. Just let Kansas have those, you know? That makes it so confusing. One of the most memorable things about Missouri for me is it has the Precious Moments Chapel. I've seen like those little like angel pictures and that kind of thing. So the guy who makes those and sold those, he built a church and he like designed it. It is beautiful. It's really well sculpted. It's just what is so interesting about it is that it has a lot of these areas dedicated to his dead children who like he lost. There are these giant monuments to the grief that he experienced as a father. And so it just completely elevates from being just like a church that you go to like worship and learn about Jesus and that kind of thing. And it becomes like this giant art piece just dedicated to this one man's unending, unfathomable sadness. And like, I think that is so beautiful and that is so interesting and fascinating. I really want to visit it. Other than that, like, I don't really have a whole lot to say about Missouri. It just seems like trees and racism. Oh yeah, St. Louis. St. Louis sucks. I don't like St. Louis. Yeah, it's like a low, unenthusiastic C tier. Montana. Montana is a sleeper hit, folks. You get four proper seasons out there, okay? You have some of the most stunning geography in like the country. It is amazing. You have uh, little pockets of Yellowstone out there too. There's some good music that has come out of Montana, I will say. Also, you have Hank Green out there. How special. It does have the highest suicide rating out of the country though. I guess Montanans don't really agree with me that it's pretty cool. I don't know, I like Montana. Montana's kind of a vibe. Uh, Billings is kind of a cool city. I, I'm gonna give it a low B tier, Nebraska. So Omaha is a really underrated city. The zoo is legendary. Uh, it's really pretty out there. The stakes. Oh my God, the stakes. It also has a really good like music scene out there too. It's fun to listen to music out there. I enjoyed my time in Lincoln well enough, even though the bar that we were playing at, when you go inside the bathroom is one of those that just did not have doors on the stalls. I know like that's standard in a lot of bathrooms and that kind of thing. There's just the differences in Lincoln, Nebraska. When I went into the cursed bathroom, there was a guy in there doing his thing in the stall with no door. I hated it. That unfortunately uh, affected my opinion of Nebraska. Nebraska is like one those states that really does not have a whole lot going on inside of it but it compensates with that with like some really cozy cities to like rebel against how boring it is you know so you find like these really sweet pockets of society and community i really like that it gets a generous c tier nevada nevada how do you say that? No matter what I say, someone's gonna get mad at me. Nevada is one of the most desperate, insecure states in the country. You do not build a city like Las Vegas if you're like confident in yourself. So growing up in Boise, if my friends and I wanted to go to Las Vegas for the weekend or something like that, we had to drive through all of Nevada. I'm here to tell you that there is absolutely nothing in that state. Out of the entire state's population, Seven out of 10 people are concentrated in one city. Everything else, it is completely barren. I understand it's easy to imagine like Las Vegas as being all Nevada, but there's a lot more Nevada than just Las Vegas. And it's so boring. Pros, you do have the Clown Hotel out there, which is cool. Also Las Vegas, I would say is an S tier city. I really love Las Vegas. It is so much fun. I don't need to tell you that Las Vegas is awesome. Las Vegas is incredible. Where in the world are you gonna see stuff like this or this? or this. Sure, Nevada is very insecure with itself, but they really are overcompensating and we're the winners for that. The whole state is like, I don't know, like a D tier and Las Vegas is like an S tier. So like, let's just round it up to a B, okay? I'll see you guys day one of When We Were Young Fest, by the way. New Hampshire, there's no sales tax. There's no income tax. You got apple cider donuts. You got pumpkins. I love me a state that respects Halloween. Listen, I'm gonna level with you, chief. I've never been here. Uh, I'm really having a hard time finding anything to say about this place. I'm sorry if you were hyped to hear what I had to say about New Hampshire. Like, what is special about this place compared to, like, the neighboring states? Like, it's a nice white noise, you know? It's better than, like, a middle-of-nowhere state, but simultaneously, it's still, like, the worst, the best. It gets, like, a low C tier. New Jersey, I am so tired of New Jersey slander. Everyone needs to be nicer to New Jersey. It does not deserve all the hate. I think the reason that, like, New Jersey gets so much hate is just because, like, New Yorkers control the media. I think that New Jersey does have better pizza than New York City. You can watch like one bite reviews by the bar stool guy. I trust that guy's opinion and like New Jersey has higher scores than New York. Is it the best pizza I've ever had? It's 100% in the conversation. This is spectacular pizza, this is 9-4. New Jersey is amazing because you have access to like everything. If you want like the world's tallest roller coaster, it's here. If you want like a ton of cryptids and ghosts, it's all here. There's like such a manic energy here 
that is so infectious and so exciting to be inside of. I don't know, it's really fast paced, it's really intense, but like, if that's what you're looking for, this is it. You got beaches, I'm on Asbury Park right now. This is fine, this is nice. New York City is 20 minutes away from me, but I have to pay New York prices. The state is so weird that they have like a dedicated magazine just documenting all the weird stuff. Like where I live right now, there's supposed to be like a tribe of cannibalistic albino people who will pull you out of your car and eat you in the woods. There is supposed to be a town just for little people and I think they found it, like it's real. It's amazing, it's fascinating. I love New Jersey. I'm so tired of people hating on New Jersey. If you're a New Jersey hater, stop it. You suck, you're boring. Also, the best alternative emo punk music here and like New Brunswick and stuff like that. That was all invented here, you know? You like my chemical romance? You're welcome. I have to give New Jersey an S tier, okay? New Mexico. I love spending time in Albuquerque on the tour, okay? Everybody in the band, we're all like big Breaking Bad fans. We we did the stuff. I've met Aaron Paul three times. I've had cocktails with Brian Cranston when he was like advertising his mezcal and stuff like that. And you know what? New Mexico was nice. I could see myself living there. There was this great sense of community and local pride that I found really attractive and beautiful. Like how cool is it that you get to live inside of Breaking Bad? Everything I know about New Mexico is just Breaking Bad, but like, that's awesome. What I experienced in Albuquerque was pretty close to what happened in the TV shows, you know? Minus all like the crazy stuff, just like the sincere portrait that they captured of Albuquerque was lovely. It, it, it made it look like a nice place. And when I spent time there, I'm like, yeah, this is kind of what I was expecting. It's nice, it's delightful. I'm biased, but you know, New Mexico, what I give it? I gave it a high B tier. Okay, it's getting dark. Um, I have a concert to go to, so I'm gonna move locations as beautiful as this beach is. Sorry, New York on, deal with it. I, I gotta watch Built to Spill real quick, sorry. <laughs> We have moved locations. Uh, it is currently one o'clock, so I'm just outside on the street recording like a crazy person. Good concert, by the way. Ooh, we got New York. I think that New York City is like the most incredible thing that humans have ever created, ever. It is like maximalist, nonstop stimulation, like everywhere. Off the chain intensity, it's crazy. No holds barred. There is more history on the average block in New York than there is culture in entire cities. It is such a storied place. Place, it's amazing. It's like it's a hotbed for human innovation. It is so hyper concentrated that like the best in the world just congregate in one place and it's just like a natural breeding ground for greatness everywhere. So yeah, like New York City's cool. It's just New York is like a whole state, not just one city as much as a lot of people think. The rest of New York is like Albany, Rochester, all, all fine places. It's boring. It's fine. It's okay. It's, it's fairly cheap, I guess. You got coastal elite types that drive me crazy. It's inoffensive. It's above average. New York City is like an S tier. I think that like the rest of New York is like a low B. So if you even it out, it's like it's, it's an A tier. Oh my God. I filmed, I talked for like 40 minutes after that, I just checked the video, it zoomed in. And so I lost all of that. Oh God, what if it does it again? Let me let me make sure it's working, because I'm paranoid now. You ever delete your homework the morning before it's due? Oh my God, I lost so much. I hope you're happy. If you don't like and subscribe, I swear to God, I'm gonna come to your house. I'm gonna steal your dog and make him my best friend, okay? <laughs> I gotta get passion, I gotta get into it. And make sure that we're okay here. This is like a strange person staring at me on the corner. So. Carolina, so my, my band Raccoon Tour was on a national tour and we had a day off in South Carolina. And so we stayed at this really nice resort hotel and we just had a phenomenal time. We got to explore the beaches, we got to swim. It was probably like our favorite stop of the entire tour. We hung out in Charleston. It's a it's a beautiful, special city. You know, we were, we were tourists. We got breakfast and stuff downtown. And it was just, it was a delight. I understand that like, like, Charleston is not all of so. South Carolina, but like, that's the frame of reference I'm working with. Uh, the only complaint I would have is that one time I was driving in so. South Carolina, I was trying to get on a highway, so it was like, you know, you get on a ramp and it's like one way. This lady was driving the wrong direction, so she was driving at me in a one way, so I got to blow my horn at her and pull over to the side. She just kept chugging along forward like I wasn't even there, and I drove past her. I saw her stupid face, and she like was just staring dead straight on like she was doing absolutely nothing wrong at all, you know? Other than that, I got no complaints. 
complaints. I have a friend who lived out there. She says it was pretty great. It, it gets like a, a shaky A tier from me, North Dakota. We had a really rough show in North Dakota. We played in Fargo and the venue is kind of tucked away in a business center. So like a lot of people just couldn't find the spot and we had like a hard deadline. And like all the other bands were really good. Uh, the people running the show were like super nice and like I saw what they were doing for the local community and that was really cool. It's just the problem is we were not able to figure out how to work the PA system. And so a good chunk of our set time was just trying to fiddle out and figure how to make these magic sound boxes work. So it was like a concert where we were trying to figure out how to put on a concert. And then it started dumping rain on us. So we had to like load all of our stuff into our van. And there was like this giant white puddle of like Fargo jungle juice. If you so much as stood like three feet away from it, it just stained everything that you owned. And so we spent the rest of the tour just covered in the Fargo jungle juice, the mystery milk, and it smelled bad. We tried to mop everything up with a jungle juice towel. And then that towel just infected everything that we knew and loved. It was like monster blood from Goosebumps. It just kept multiplying and growing until you're swimming in it. Plus, I think that South Dakota is just like an infinitely more interesting state. North Dakota... <sighs> I'm sorry. It's, it's gotta be a D tier from me. Next we have Ohio. 21 Pilots is my favorite band, so that nets Ohio a couple points for sure. There is a really good sense of community out in Ohio, and I think it comes from just how bored everybody is. It is the suburbs, you know? And so like I imagine a lot of kids starting bands, learn to skateboard, and like making dumb videos with their friends, and that's just because Ohio is so conducive to that, with just like how little it gives you. I think like it it's just the right amount where it brings out art and that sort of thing. So I know like there's a lot of really good bands based out in Ohio that aren't Twin Pilots. Like I'm, I'm, I'm done talking about Twin Pilots. It's just, you know, it's just chill. You know, like when you have all these punk kids being like, I hate this town and stuff. Their town is in Ohio and they hate it. But you know what? They made a banger for it. It's like Ohio is tough love that just brings out greatness in people. I also think that like Columbus is a really great city. Like that is a place I could live. It is beautiful. It's, it's homey. It's a vibe. Ohio gets a C tier. I'm going to check on the video real quick. We're still golden. I am so nervous. <laughs> Oklahoma. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with some cowboy stuff. I'm fine with some fried food. What else do they have? Tornadoes, barbecue, steaks. I'm down as hell for some catfish. Oklahoma is a pretty good musical. I think it's Charlie Kaufman's favorite musical. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I gotta do a cop out here. Uh, this is just one of the states that I've driven through and I never thought about again. I'm sure there's pockets of culture buried that are very cool. It's just all those pockets of culture exist in spite of Oklahoma. I'm sorry, Oklahoma is a D tier state. Oregon. So Oregon is like straight up sexy. You drive through and there's like these majestic mountains and trees and rivers. There's a ferry flying through the air. And then you find this weird and creepy theme park that some dude just built his entire life. Every time that my band is driving through Oregon, we all like stop and put our phones away and we're just like glued to the outside because it's just like a postcard outside. Does Twilight take place in Oregon? Washington, damn it. I think that Oregon is like one of my favorite places in the world. Like the Oregon coast is just spectacular. I, I love it. It's just the problem is Oregon is home to the highest concentration of ex-girlfriends for me. They all tend to go to Portland, Oregon. I want to give Oregon an S tier. It's just the problem is it has the highest concentration of people who don't like me. And so me personally, I, I can't get on board because of that very reason. So due to issues that are not poor Oregon's fault, I'm sorry, buddy. I got to drop Oregon down to an A tier. Listen, if you don't like my rules, you can just start your own YouTube channel and make fun of me for it. Pennsylvania. I think that Pennsylvania is absolutely beautiful. I was driving through Pennsylvania to move to New Jersey from Idaho. And I remember I was like at the top of this hill and I looked behind me and there were just trees everywhere as far as I could see. And I just felt so small, like Pennsylvania just swallowed me up. And I just like, just felt like the whole world was just trees. I was just completely immersed. It was beautiful. If I was in a horror movie, that would have been the oh crap shot where like the camera zooms out. And you're like, well, you can't escape from this monster. I, I know that Pennsylvania is known for Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. It's just that I haven't been to Pittsburgh and I don't really think that Philly is all it's cracked up to be. I like a good Philly cheesesteak. If there is a concert happening in New York City and Philadelphia, I will be going to Philadelphia every time because I hate going into New York City. Problem is, uh, I 
I, I, I just, uh, Philly kind of sucks. Have you ever been to Kensington? I've spent a good chunk of time in Kensington, and I'm here to tell you that Philly just does not care about its residents. It is so sad. There's a great Channel 5 documentary you should watch about the streets of Philadelphia. It's like not exploitative or anything like that. Like, people are losing limbs uh, out there, and the city government is just like, the, the be gone, miscreants. It's just a complete and utter systemic failure on all ends. Philly just makes me so mad. And like, it thinks it's so much cooler than it actually is. That like, so many people I know from Jersey are like, oh my god, I'm so excited to move down to Philly. Like, it's such a cool city. And I'm like, it's not. Why is Philly eating up all the cool Jersey people, you know? Like, just stay here. Yeah, I just, I don't love Philly. I, I know I've just been rattling on about, like, negatives, but I cannot emphasize to you enough, like, just how magical those forests are. How just huge and expansive and special it is. It feels like one last piece of the wilderness still available for you to explore. So, with that said, what did I give it? B tier's too high. I'm gonna give it a, a high C tier. Rhode Island. So, we actually stayed in a really nice Ramada in in Rhode Island. It was delightful. Rhode Island just feels like really small and cozy, very friendly. Like everything that you need is right at your fingertips. I went through Rhode Island on tour with a band called Combat. Really good band, by the way. They're blowing up right now. They're awesome. They told us about their favorite thing to do in the area, which was this pinball museum run by a very eccentric man. And they're like, yeah, you should come hang out with us. And so we did. We explored the pinball museum and it was awesome. So cool. We just played pinball all day. We like fought each other in air hockey. And then we got to meet the owner of the pinball museum. And he was like, yeah, man, come, I'll, I'll give you a, a nice tour. And then he like walked us through the entire place and taught us everything that I never wanted to know about pinball. Howdy. They're, they're having so much more fun than I am. <laughs> and then he was just telling us personal stories from his life. Like, oh yeah, during my homelessness phase in the 90s, I was like crawling through Amsterdam and stuff like that. And I met the mafia and I like slept in their house and they like, you know, called my mom and it was really weird. It was a very memorable day. Yeah, I, I got no gripes from uh, the, the family guy state. Yeah, B tier. I, I feel good about B tier. North Carolina. As soon as we crossed the border into uh, North Carolina, it was like the roads just fell apart underneath. Us. You look ahead at North Carolina and it's like falling apart, and then you look behind you at South Carolina and it's like beautiful and picturesque and perfect. North Carolina, it just it's a downgrade in every way, shape, and form from South Carolina. You got Charlotte. It's just the problem is my best friend moved to Charlotte for a while, and like he was telling me the roommates that he had just sucked. What the hell are they doing? Are they driving in circles just to yell out their window? My god, they're drunk. They're gonna kill somebody. I hope it's me. I hope they kill me. I remember we saw a roadkill alligator. That was really interesting. It's just worse. South Carolina. It's not that great. I don't want to give it like a total D tier. It's like it's a really low C tier. South Dakota. Does Donald Trump know about South Dakota? Because it is like really MAGA coded. Donald Trump's entire campaign is just like, bro, I'm going to make everywhere South Dakota. I feel like he would love South Dakota. It's covered in these gaudy architectural monuments to patriotism and that kind of thing. You have Mount Rushmore, which is like super overrated. You have Crazy Horse, which strikes me as kind of a scam. Oh, you also have the Wild West with Deadwood. If you've never been to Deadwood, it is crazy. You also got like Sturgis, which is like a motorcycle convention. It's like the best week of the worst people you've ever met's lives. Sturgis is crazy. <laughs> There's also just like the flagrant disrespect of indigenous people's land and monuments. I'm sure that Donald Trump would love that as well. It's also worth noting that South Dakota has what I think is like the best reptile zoo in the world, the Reptile Gardens. It's incredible. It's not just like a tourist trap. It's like a legitimately great zoo. Yeah, it's got its flaws. The rest of the country has its flaws. It's just South Dakota knows exactly what it is and it commits so hard. So I like, I respect that, you know, I respect South Dakota. So I got to give it a B tier. Tennessee. Wow, I I think I actually kind of hate Tennessee. So Tennessee has like the most annoying accents in the country. Memphis is like one of the worst places I've ever been in my entire life. When you live in or near a big city, you just kind of need to get used to carrying like $5 bills in your pocket. And you got to get used to people like just approaching you out of nowhere and trying to start up conversations so they can like, you know, take something from you or whatnot. Or you're just going to have like weirdos standing yelling at you from across the street or whatever. That'll 
happen like maybe like once a day in New York City, depending on where you're at. And Memphis, it is inescapable. Every two blocks, I swear to God, I tend to be a magnet for weirdos. And like the people I was with agreed with me that like Memphis was just out to get me. Do I, do I have that vibe? Do I have the whole you should yell stuff at me vibe on the street? I guess I've been seeing people yelling at me as they've been driving by, so. The only saving grace for Memphis is that it is home to what I think is like the Statue of Liberty, the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid. It's incredible. You need to go there. Every time I've gone to the Bass Pro Shop, I have like seen the face of God. You also got like Nashville, which is a little bit overrated. I just, I don't like country music. It does nothing for me. You do have Julian Baker, who's cool. You do have the Low Blow, which is an amazing band. Nashville's just not that great. Also, I don't like the fact that I see Tennessee in the news every week for trying to invent a new way to light transgender people on fire, steal their puppies, poison their water. It's just Tennessee just gets so creative with how to terrorize LGBT people. In my heart, I want to give Tennessee an F tier, but they do have the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid, so I'm going to give it a D tier. Yeehaw, you got Texas. Texas should be divided into littler states because it is just too big. There, there's just, there's way too much going on, way too much variation. You got places like Dallas and Austin and San Antonio, Houston, but you also have places where like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre takes place. There's so many extremes in that state that's like hard to quantify. I remember in American history class, we learned about the Alamo. The Alamo is like the coolest story in American history ever. It is like the Avengers for the Wild West. Like every single cool historian historical figure either had like a crazy like character arc defining moment or they died. It is so epic. It's so cool. It's so exciting. If you've never heard the story of the Alamo, it's definitely worth a YouTube essay on. It is amazing. I think that Tex-Mex is not that great and I am annoyed with how confident Texas is with their Mexican food. It's not that great. West-Mex, way better. Every bit of Mexican food I've had in like Tucson, Arizona is a trillion times better than any thing I've had in Texas. And the thing is, in Arizona, they're like humble about it. They're like chill. In Texas, they're just so gaudy and loud about their Mexican food and they so don't deserve it. I don't know. There, there's a lot of consideration to take in with Texas. I, I think it is an interesting place. I think there are some neat people. I have played a really great show in Texas before. I'm going to give it a fairly generous B tier. Utah. Oh God. Utah is like an A24 horror movie. It is utopia if you're like white and straight and a dude but you know if you're none of those things then you're probably gonna have a pretty bad time the state was essentially started by the mormon religion and for those of you who don't know mormonism essentially says that actually there is a sequel to the bible and this one dude like read it off of some golden plates and that kind of thing but he lost the original so don't ask about seeing it or anything like that and in mormonism you eventually learn like secret handshakes so you have to baptize on behalf of dead people who didn't have the chance to become Mormons, so like, they've baptized Anne Frank, symbolically. Make that what you will. They assert that, like, horses and steel and chariots existed in America before the Europeans came, even though that's, like, objectively untrue. Wait until you hear about their stance on people with dark skin, by the way. Their whole thing is that Jesus came to the Americas to hang out with the indigenous people out here to teach them about the word, too. Like, it's weird. It is a weird religion. And I understand I'm not supposed to be just, like, talking about religion. I have other videos for that. It's just Utah is Mormonism. And so a lot of your opinions on the state and how it's run will also be reflective of your opinions on that religion. So that means that you're dealing with some pretty crazy alcohol laws. That means that you're gonna have a really hard time finding any drag shows out there that aren't being raided by police. It is worth mentioning, however, that like the more depraved and evil a local government is like Utah, the cooler the punk scene is. And so Salt Lake City especially gets to have like these amazing shows. Like Kilby Court is amazing. I played there, it was life-changing. I love Kilby Court. There's other great places like the Beehive and like they're just these little pockets of humanity humanity that exists in spite of the conservative leadership out there. And it's like, it's a weird flavor of conservative too. Listen, there's a lot of bizarre, weird stuff, but there's also some cool stuff too. I think Lagoon is a really great uh, theme park. I like the Cannibal Roller Coaster a whole lot. Also, it is pretty. And there's also some pretty good bands out there too. I want to give Utah a, a D tier, but like it has so many extreme goods and extreme bads. It, it kind of mellows out to like a C. Vermont, you got Bernie Sanders, you got Ben and Jerry's, 
Cities, you have some maple syrup. It's super beautiful. You got villages, progressive politics, you got beer and cider, covered bridges. It feels like Vermont is just like a hippie commune that just got out of hand. You know, if you like old white liberal people, Vermont is probably your jam. Vermont seems like it has a really great quality of life. Like the people who live there are like really, really happy. It's just, there's, there's not a ton happening in Vermont. Like if you're the kind of person who just wants to like get married, buy a house, have kids, keep a job, and just do that, come home and watch Netflix and like maybe go out for like a, a town picnic or something like that. Vermont is your place for sure. Like I don't think like there's anything better in the country for people like that. It's just the problem is Vermont just doesn't have anything crazy. Like your favorite band is not playing in Vermont. Uh, there is no cutting edge cultural happenings in Vermont. If you are happy just going with the flow, Vermont is amazing. I just personally want a little bit more excitement in my life. A lot of my friends would probably go crazy in Vermont as beautiful and perfect as it is. For the people who it works for, it works. It's, it's pretty inoffensive. Uh, I, I want to give it a B tier. Virginia. One of my favorite bands, North Bloom, is based out of Richmond. So that's a good start. You got uh, Washington, D.C. nearby. Has some really great uh, hardcore music. It's It's got the colonial vibe. It's very picturesque to me. It's another one of the states that looks like it just goes crazy for Halloween. That's extra points. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I've, I've driven through there, but like it just it doesn't stir a lot of emotions in me. It, it's, it's just, it's, I'm sorry, it's one of those C tier states. I just, I don't have a whole lot to say about Virginia. Washington. Washington is like Oregon's uppity, preppy, older sibling. The two states are similar in a lot of ways. It's just that Washington is significantly less cool. It's like Oregon listens to My Chemical Romance and Modest Mouse, and Washington is over here listening to like the Arctic Monkeys and Alt-J. It's like you can do so much worse, but you can also do better. Oregon has like that cool factor, and Washington is objectively fine on paper. It's just, it's missing that X factor. Washington is just so much more expensive, and it doesn't give you a whole lot Lot back in return compared to Oregon. I will say, however, that I will take Seattle over Portland any day of the week. I love West Side Seattle. It's incredible. I think that Pike's Market is just a legitimately great cultural center. Also, uh, the Mopop Museum is like world class. It's amazing. If you've never been, you're missing out. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, it, it is objectively fine. It's just, it's not cool. So Washington gets like a, a mid B tier. Wisconsin. I don't know why, but Wisconsin tends to breed really good YouTubers. My favorite YouTuber of all time is Video Game Donkey. He's out there. I have some friends on YouTube who are out there, but I don't think they've ever publicly disclosed that they're in Wisconsin, so I can't say anything about them. Wisconsin is kind of a sleeper hit state. You'd never expect it, but it, it, it it's kind of cool, actually. I think that the sky in Wisconsin is beautiful. It's enough to make your heart flutter. It's just very picturesque out in Wisconsin. I think the Dells are pretty neat. Milwaukee was a good city. Madison, I'm excited to visit someday. I'm very excited to visit Madison. There's a lot to love about Wisconsin. I, I will say, however, they're very proud of Culver's. Culver's I, I've never eaten at Culver's and been like, wow, that was tasty. It's like the most bland nothing food in the world. Even their ice cream and like the custards and stuff like that is just so underwhelming with like nothing notable to write home about. They do have like a cool water park and uh, that one roller coaster that goes underneath the parking lot of the park. Yeah, I just, I think it's a, it's, it's a sleeper hit, Wisconsin. So I'm going to give it a very generous, very generous B tier. I swear to God. I just now realized that I forgot Kentucky and I forgot West Virginia. So now I gotta go out and I gotta talk about these nothing states real quick. <sighs> okay, let's, let's go get this over with. Kentucky, mid chicken. You guys got horse racing. Congratulations, you know they have cars now. You don't need to like put the horses through that. What exactly is separating Kentucky from like an in Indiana or a Tennessee or an Alabama, they're just starting to blend together. And when I think of Kentucky, it just like has a phonetically more fun name to say and that's about it really. I know there's some cute forests and some neat hotels, but that's it. I'm gonna give Kentucky a very low, low, low C tier. West Virginia ranks down there with Mississippi and what I presume to be some of the most unhappy states imaginable. You have the Appalachian Mountains where the skinwalkers are trying to eat you and you just have these miserable living conditions in the rust belt brought on by broken promises from politicians that sucked everything out and 
went on their way. Yeah, West Virginia is like a low D. I've been up for like 40 hours. I want to get this video done, damn it. Finally, we have Wyoming. Wyoming is very quiet. There is nothing happening in Wyoming. It is just desolate desert. I mean, like the only state that comes close is like Alaska. Like Alaska has Wyoming beat in terms of like barrenness. It's just like you can't go anywhere in Alaska. You can go places in Wyoming. Wyoming's really slow. Um, like there's there's just no big cities. Wyoming is the kind of place where like you go outside and you look up and then you just see stars and like the color of the galaxies flashing through. And you know, I, I live out in New Jersey now and I'm right next to New York City. And you just, you don't see that anymore. I, I don't see that. In Wyoming, you just cannot escape the magnitude of like the universe around you and just how tiny you are. Wyoming is just such a different pace. I can imagine that like for a lot of people, Wyoming would be suffocating and miserable. I, I wouldn't want to like live there, but maybe once a week every year, I try to make it a priority to go up and spend time in Wyoming and just disconnect from everything. And it is magical. There's nothing else like it. Wyoming is like the perfect detox for your soul if you know what you're looking for. My dad grew up in Wyoming and when we visit his hometown, he likes to drive or walk around and he points out buildings and he's like, oh yeah, my friend and I had a sleepover in there and I hit him with a pillow too hard and he cried. Oh, in there I was hanging out with some friends, we raided the beer cabinet and I tasted beer and I thought it was really gross. But it's like tons and tons of stories and they all have such small stakes, but you gotta realize that because it's Wyoming, everything is so small and tiny and it takes such a slow pace that you have no choice but to really take in those little moments and appreciate just like how special they are. Be conscious and be mindful and in the moment, you know? My family spends a lot of time in a cabin near Esterbrook, and uh, that's in the same neighborhood as Converse County, which is a real place. My band has a song called Converse County, and that's a song I wrote about like how small Wyoming makes me feel. If you go into Wyoming expecting like tons of stimulus, uh, you're gonna be miserable. But if you go into it fully understanding that what you see is what you get, and you really take it for what it is and allow it to slow you down, and be mindful. I think it's special, I think it's beautiful. Wyoming gets a very, 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 very biased A tier. Yeah, sorry about that. If you don't like it, make your own tier list. Sucks to suck. Oh boy, I think that's it. That is all 50 states uh, with my pure objective reasoning. How did your state do? Did your state do okay? Do you like where it landed? If you don't like it, I can DM you my address. You can show up and we will fist fight. Just keep in mind that if you do show up, I will be fighting back and you'll probably lose because I'm a cheater. Also a little reminder, I am going live on September 21st at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a little birthday bash thingamaboob so I can afford a new apartment. I hope you come out because I am terrified that it'll just be me all by myself and I'll be so scared and lonely. God, if only knew the amount of work I put into this. Like, subscribe, vote for Homelander as president. Stay safe, stay smart, stay spicy. I don't know. Is anybody even watching these anymore? I think the important thing is I'm having fun doing YouTube again. I'm truly at a point where I'm just like making videos for me and my heart and my soul and I'm finding a lot of like personal satisfaction in the stuff that I'm making now, that I'm able to just like disconnect from views and analytics and just focus on the art and the craft. And the fact that anybody is watching this is really special. So if you're watching, thank you. I, I appreciate you. I think you're really cool. Today's been a lot. So <laughs> I will see you next week. I'm trying to upload weekly now. Goodbye. Live and love.